Hi, I'm Paul George, and welcome to OurClass123.com. I'd like to introduce you to the materials that I use today uh, for watercolor. And uh, I'd like to begin with my palette. This is a, I use a Robert Wood palette. Uh, there are many that are good, so whatever you're comfortable with. But I particularly like this because I feel as though the wells, the wells are designed to hold a tube of paint. Uh, don't, you know, one thing I, I must say to you now, and I say this to almost every class I teach, you have to paint as if it's free. You know, the most valuable thing you have is your time and your life, and you don't want to waste it doing paintings with cheap paint and cheap products uh, because you're worried about nickel and diming and so forth. Buy the best you can buy. Uh, I, I can tell you that right from the beginning. Buy the best products you can buy and keep it simple. You don't have to buy every tube of paint on the market. And if I were you, I would, I mean, I'm not, I don't make any commissions on these products, so I'm not selling them in that sense. What I'm trying to tell you is that I would use, you know, established companies that have a good name and reputable uh, products that you can use. Uh, I'll get into I use primarily Winsor Newton. Uh, they've been around for 150 years, make a beautiful product. You don't want to be painting and thinking about, you know, I can't get this color or that color and realize that it's an inferior product. Uh, there are some cheap products out there and uh, you don't want to use them. You want to stay away from anything student grade. You're not saving any money in the long run. Uh, you use twice as much paint with a student grade paint than you do with, uh, you know, with a professional grade. So you're not saving any money. You're using twice as much product. So this is the Robert Wood palette, as I say, and I'll show you how I set up my colors. I keep the warms on one side, the cools on the other. This is raw sienna. This is cad yellow, and this is Aurelian yellow. Those are here. I separate it. I keep my uh, quinacridone gold here. And you notice in the middle I put this green on the corner. Uh, these are thalo colors. You know, they're very uh, Windsor green. Windsor and thalo are the same. You know, uh, a Windsor product, Windsor green, Windsor blue, Windsor red. Uh, those are Windsor Newton's brand name for thalo. So they're very strong colors and they're easy to mix up because they're the same colors as, as other colors you have, but they're made differently. So uh, I keep them in the corners. I keep the green, the blue, and a lizard crimson in that corner. So I'll continue. This is quinacridone rose, thalo blue, Windsor blue, ultramarine blue. This is cobalt blue teal, cobalt blue, uh, a lizard crimson. This is quinacridone sienna and cadmium red. Uh, this is burnt sienna, which I'm using less of. Burnt sienna, uh, quinacridone sienna is very much like burnt sienna, but it's a much warmer color. I'll mention also that my quinacridone colors I buy from Daniel Smith. Uh, this is the red, the cobalt blue teal, quinacridone uh, gold, and quinacridone sienna. I get those from Daniel Smith in Washington, danielsmith.com. The Winsor Newton is available pretty much everywhere. So that takes care of the paint products. Uh, I'll mention my brushes at this point. Uh, I use, I bought these from Daniel Smith as well. But, you know, any good, any good wash brush, these are not sables. They're imitation sables. They're not a real expensive brush but they give you a good wash. You know, almost any brushes you get used to, you can use because you just, you know, it's just for applying the paint. So, like I say, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on these brushes that are just, that you're using for washes. But I would spend a lot of money on these. These are, uh, my friend Charles Reed uh, helped to design these brushes. These come from artexpress.com. Uh, I love them. I've been using them for many years. Uh, they're expensive, but they're worth it, and they certainly uh, can take a beating. But you want to take care of them. You know, one thing I'll point out is, you know, you, you, you got to put enough paint in the palette. You don't want it to, 
you know, if it's hard, you don't want to start taking these beautiful sable brushes and start grinding them into that hard paint because that's how you kill your points. So keep the, keep the paint nice and moist. Keep plenty out there. You can't do beautiful paintings with, with bird droppings in your palette because it just doesn't work, okay? Especially when you're doing darks. You know, if you're looking for rich, beautiful darks, you have to have soft paint to work from. Uh, if you're using hard paint and you're digging into it, you're not going to get the nice, not nice, beautiful darks. So I can't, uh, I can't tell you enough about these brushes. They're beautiful for both, you know, you can see the point on them. The point is exceptional. And this one is several months old. I use a 10, 12, and a 14. Don't get the little tiny small brushes because you don't want to get involved in that much detail. I'll mention also that I use a Stedler uh, 4B pencil. You know, people use what they're comfortable with. It's, I think I recommend a softer pencil just because it erases easily, it doesn't damage your paper, and you can, you know, just move smoothly through any kind of grain. Keep a spray bottle handy at all times. Uh, I'll mention on the, you know, on the board, get a lightweight board. I use a uh, one-eighth paneling board, and I also use Gator board. Uh, to hold my paper, but I, I hold the paper to the board with bulldog clips. Uh, artists use everything from staples to thumbtacks to tape. Uh, some artists, my friend Bob Wade loves to tape all the way around his paper because he gets a nice sharp edge. Well, you can still do that, but not tape the paper to the board because your paper is like a sponge and when it gets wet, it wants to expand. And when it expands, if you have it taped all the way around, it's going to buckle and you're going to be dealing with more, more problems of buckling and so forth. So if you have it, if you have the bulldog clips, these are like 29 cents or 39 cents. If you have four of these on your paper, when it gets wet and it needs, it's expanding, you can always release it and pull it tight and restretch it through your painting. It's, it's not a bother and you get very used to doing that. Uh, I'll also mention this is a palette knife uh, that I do. I use a lot from oil painting, but I also use it in watercolor. You'll see if you watch some of these demonstration paintings, you'll see me using this and doing trees and branches and tree trunks and so forth. But it's great to have, have handy. And lastly, I'll finish up uh, with paper. There, you know, basically there are three kinds of paper. Uh, I recommend buying in sheets. I think it's the cheapest way to do it. Uh, a 22 by 30 sheet, uh, and then you can, you know, you can break it up, cut it up as small as you want, and work, work on the board. There's basically three kinds. There's rough paper, cold press paper, and hot press paper. Hot press is the smoothest paper. It's very smooth, but it also is beautiful for lifting. A lot of artists use the hot press paper for doing portraits. I love the rough. I, the rough is especially good for me when you're doing you know, any kind of a rough scene where there's a lot of rocks or surf or uh, anything like that. But I use it all the time. I use, you know, I use everything and I recommend using everything. Don't stick with, you know, don't stick with one particular kind of paper or paint or, you know, any, keep Keep moving around. Don't sit in a comfort zone where you're doing the same thing over and over again. So stay with that. Uh, the last thing I want to do and finish up with is show you my easel. Uh, I can't tell you enough about this easel. So let's get to that.